Hello everyone. I am wanting to address the issue of uh, sex work, sex workers, uh, and I would like to look at why um, we are constantly referring to sex workers as people who sell sex or sell their bodies uh, without understanding that all they do is actually provide a service. So uh, these discussions happen in the networks I work with, and um, I would like to answer that question. The one thing that hits you when you're working with sex workers is you come across a lot of society um, disgust of people who either provide the sexual service or even access the sexual service. So it's both ways. And we'll look at it a little more uh, clearly later. Um, and we all always know that monogamy is the norm, which actually is translated as a single sexual partner. That's it. So therefore, even if it's serial monogamy, it's fine. So, you know, if it's one single sexual partner on, you know, at various parts of your life, that is also fine. The problem is polygamy and polyandry, which are actually translated as multiple sexual partners. Even till then, I think a little bit, as long as it's multiple sexual partners, it's fine. The problem arises when it's multiple sexual partnerships, either semi-permanent or permanent. That is one part of it. The other part of it, of course, is as we all know, gender plays a very important role in understanding multiple sexual partnership. It's frowned upon in men, but it's forbidden in women. The other uh, part that I'd like to look at is caste and class, uh, how that plays a role in all of this. Um, in Marathi, you know, there's this chest beating claim, na? Patlan Chapur which is like the son of the village headman. And the dialogue is there in all Marathi movies, for instance, ki if the Patil's son will not be, you know, access and um, women, who else will? So it's almost like this chest beating thing. And uh, what it actually justifies is both access and fulfillment of sexual pleasure for this son. What happens with violations? Uh, before we turn to work and pleasure, let's just look at that. What is the imagined violation in all this? The imagined violation, of course, in multiple sexual partnerships is, and I'm talking about partnerships, is the issue of loyalty, that you're not being loyal enough, that you're not being pure. You know, the sex has got the sacred space, and you're not being pure to that sacred uh, space of sex. And of course, morality, the good and bad, the woman with loose morals. This is, these are the imagined value, uh, violations that one comes across. And so the answer to why the disgust is because society cannot deal with the, uh, with people who are, um, I would say with the deliciousness of doing the forbidden. Society just can't deal with it. So poor sex workers, what do they get dumped with? There are people who are challenging the sacred space of sex. There are people who cannot control uh, and they give in to these many desires. They are people who are selfish because they don't care for a loved one. And these are the people who are creating this environment such that people who are accessing these services are able to um, easily access this forbidden space. And therefore, in this frame, they are the most disgusting. And they've had to deal with that for years and years. And of course, let us not even go to patriarchy, which um, has decided that uh, either these women are heartless or they're golden hearted, one of the two. And so we have to look at terminology. What is the terminology? The terminology that these women have been plagued with or sex workers have been plagued with is the understanding that they sell sex, they sell their bodies, they sell the loyalty, they sell the purity, they sell the morals. It is only when we started working with sex workers in WAM, the National Asia Anyai Mukti Parishad, National Network of Sex Workers, or the sex workers and allies in the South Asia region, all the discussions yielded that we do not have this language to describe selling sex. We have selling bodies. They are vikri. But sex vikri, we actually don't even have language like that and it doesn't make sense. So therefore, sex work was easy to uh, take over because sex work is an English word uh, and it is a non-stigmatized English word. Whereas prostitute has been so deeply stigmatizing, like Vesha is a Sanskrit word and therefore easy to take um, to accept, but Randi, Vebichari, Papi Aurat, 
was all putting women in a very negative space. Trade union resign uh, resignation was another level because who's the employer? How can prostitutes be self-employed? The law doesn't recognize sex worker. So this was the mess. At this point in time, the networks that we work with, the sex work collectives that we work with, all of us sat down and decided that actually what sex workers do is provide a sexual service. And this sexual service means that the sex workers provide the service and the clients come for pleasure. That is the uh, bottom line, because if you're pleasurable, then the chances are that the clients will keep coming back and they'll become regulars and your business will run. Because if you don't allow the client to have any pleasure, there is no way that uh, the client is going to come back. And this is dhanda. This is uh, a business. And this business has to run on regulars, and like all businesses. So the discussion then that came about was that this is work. It is decent work. Because as a ILO decent work uh, explains to us what decent work should constitute, sex work answers all those uh, answers, the, those standards. And it is meant to give pleasure to the client. Thank you.